Mr. Kennedy, it's Chris Tyrold. I have a quick question. I have been fascinated watching the tango between you and the Libertarian Party. Uh, you've got what they need, which is buzz and interest and high name identification and all of that stuff. They've got what you need, which is ballot access. They'll, they'll end up being on the ballot in all 50 states. But I note that you guys are different in some profound ways. You're both disruptors, but they're anti-government, and you have been a proponent for governmental regulation on the environment and a host of things over time. Just talk a little bit about how that, how that dance, how that romance is going. Well, you know, I've actually been aligned with libertarians on a lot of issues for all of my career. And, you know, I, my approach to free mark to, uh, to environmental for environmental issues for 40 years, you can go back and look at my speeches for 40 years, has been a market-based approach, you know, that at the most, at the, the best thing that we can act, we don't have free market capitalism in our country. We have corporate crony capitalism, and that's what's destroying the environment. If we had true free markets promote efficiency, efficiency means the elimination of waste. Pollution is waste. In a true free market, a true free market would require us to properly value our natural resources. And it's the undervaluation of those resources that cause us to use them wastefully. In a true free market, you can't make yourself rich without making your neighbors rich and without enriching your community. What polluters do is they make themselves rich by making everybody else poor. And they do that by escaping the discipline of the free market and forcing the public to pay their production costs by externalizing their costs. Oh, on this issue and many other issues, I'm very aligned with uh, libertarians. Now, the Libertarian Party is made up a lot of a lot of iconoclasts. So there is all different brands of, of libertarianism. And, you know, most of them, it, the one thing they all have in common is that they hate authority <laughs> and uh, they mistrust it and they, <laughs> they mistrust government. And so, you know, uh, I love dealing with libertarians. I love speaking with them. But, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll see if there's a future for me with that party. We, we will get ballot access with or without libertarians. Uh, we are, we're on track to do it, and we don't have any doubt that we're going to be in all 50 states and, uh, and the District of Columbia. Libertarian Party nominate RFK Jr. as its candidate in late May. That's when the convention happens here in Washington. Might know someone who has that answer. Joining us now is the chair of the Libertarian National Committee, Angela McArdle. Angela, thanks for being with us here on the Hill. Appreciate the time. So are, are you actively recruiting RFK Jr. right now? I'm not allowed to actively recruit anyone for the for the presidential nomination. I'm certainly friendly with his campaign, just like I am with all the other candidates' campaigns, though. What did you make of his comments last night? You mean about being open to seeking our nomination? I mean, I think that's the yeah. wise thing to do. Anybody who is an independent and is liberty-minded or perceives themselves to be liberty-minded should be looking at our ballot access. Uh, not only do we have ballot access in a majority of states, and, and we intend to, to reclaim it at 50 states again in 2024, but we have the experience and the ground game to do it. It's taken decades of institutional memory and, and learning and practice to get it done. And so... You know, of course, um, of course, I'm sure we're appealing right now. W would you consider him the favorite at this point in time? No, I don't think that we have any favorites right now. And that's not a knock against him. You know, we have a very ordinary group of delegates. They're very interested in finding the best, most principled messenger, uh, someone who represents us ideologically. And uh, we're all we also have a group of people who are very focused on ballot access. And of course, having Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as our candidate would absolutely seal ballot access for us. But it's not decided yet. Right. So um, he's a Kennedy, obviously. Democratic uh, sure. name, Democratic, uh, obviously, the, the, you know, legendary Democratic name. Here's what he told Elizabeth Vargas during the town hall, uh, town hall with News Nation uh, in the middle of last year. I'll get your reaction on the other side. My plan is to win this election. And I don't have a plan B. Okay. 
He said he didn't have a plan B, and clearly he does, because he left the Democratic Party. Are you, do, do you worry at all that he is, would, could potentially simply just use the Libertarian Party for the ballot access? I mean, define worry and define use. I think that if he became our nominee, there would be an understanding with us that he doesn't 100 percent represent us ideologically. He is getting uh, ballot access by using our name and branding. And in return, we are securing ballot access for the future. And, uh, you know, whether or not it's uh, for better or worse, we would also be potentially unlocking some federal funding. So it's really... If that happens, it's going to have to be a conscious decision of the delegates and a, a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, Ms. McArdle, it's Chris Steyerwalt, and I just wanted to quickly ask you. I asked uh, Mr. Kennedy last night about the fact that he is a person who spent most of his career prior to this uh, as an advocate for regulation, right? He was somebody who mm -hmm. was looking for, especially on environmental issues, looking for more regulation, more government intervention. He had an answer last night where he tried to square the circle by saying that he favors market solutions yeah. uh, for dealing with uh, environmental problems. You're not supposed to be giving advice to anybody who's seeking your party's nomination, I know, but can you talk a little bit about the tension, if there's tension there, between the libertarian uh, uh, electorate, as it were, and Kennedy's track record? Sure. Well, I'll say I give advice to all of them. I just can't be playing favorites. <laughs> okay. And, you know, the the talk that he gave at Freedom Fest, which is one of the biggest libertarian um, gatherings in the country in July, uh, was, was really good. And he talked about free market uh, solutions to environmental issues. And it seems as though he's had a sincere awakening on this issue. Uh, and, and if he has, you know, I absolutely applaud that. I want to hear free market solutions to problems that people are concerned about. I think that he, along with a lot of other people, had some pretty significant paradigm shifts over the last few years. People really saw the government response to, to COVID, well, you know, with it being lockdowns and mandates and, and started questioning a lot of their other beliefs as well. And I think that that's probably something that happened with him when it comes to regulatory frameworks or schemes. All right. As I all right, welcome back to The Hill here on News Nation. So with all the focus on Trump and Biden, keep in mind that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is polling, depending on what poll you look at on any given day, somewhere around 9 to 15 percent. But here's his problem. He needs ballot access. So could he run as a libertarian, potentially giving him access to all 50 states? He sounded warm to the idea on News Nation last night. I love dealing with libertarians. I love speaking with them, but... Uh... You know, we'll, we'll see if there's a future for me with that party. We, we will get ballot access with or without libertarians. All right, Mick, Mark, Johanna, obviously one of the questions looking forward. What happens if he's on the ballot in all 50 states? Mick, how, how worried are you from a Republican perspective if that indeed happens? First of all, the last thing he said is just is just verifiably false. This is his only chance to get on the ballot. He has waited too long to get on the ballot. It's this or nothing. So Robert F. Kennedy does not. I think he's on the state on the ballot right now in Utah. Um, from a Republican versus Democrat perspective, I, I'll be curious to see what Johanna has to say. I, I think the Democrats are a lot more concerned about this. The polling I've seen shows that he pulls probably two to one from Democrats and, uh, over Republicans. So this is a much bigger Joe Biden problem than it is a uh, Donald Trump problem. This is why we are very worried, Mick. You are absolutely right. That's why depressed primary turnout is a flag for us, because people are not show showing up for Joe Biden. And there are a number of Democrats who could go third party. A third party race, a third party candidate, a viable option could very well mean a second term President Trump. Yeah, no, this is all about this is all about the swing states. I mean, you literally have what 43,000 votes in three states divide, decided yeah. 2020 and you add a third party that can draw 9 to 15%, you've now put all of those states in play and probably put a few more in. Yeah. And taking exception to anything from there? Uh so on partisan affiliation and uh, uh the family name Kennedy has 
some problems for Democrats. But on vibes, it's all on the Trump side, right? Mm. Uh, Kennedy's a disruptor. Uh, he is that famous. He is outsider. He is old. He is for boomer nostalgia. If you want to make America great again, uh, RFK Jr. It, it lines up there very well. And if he's running as a libertarian, then he is going to be running to the right instead of running okay. to the left. And it's interesting.